The Jedi Order was one of the most long-lived organizations in the history of the galaxy. It had around 10,000 members by the time of its fall, and at its height, it had many, many more. By the time of the Clone Wars, the Jedi primarily operated out of a temple on Coruscant, but that wasn't their only temple, nor even their oldest. In fact, the Jedi Temple on Coruscant was rather young as far as Jedi temples went, and many others scattered across the galaxy were much older. In this video, we'll be taking a look at those other Jedi temples, as well as at how the Jedi Order evolved. Attention, Sergeant on deck! Most Jedi temples were actually built relatively late in the Order's history, and to understand this, we need to take a look at how the Jedi Order evolved. The heavily centralized, bureaucratic Jedi Order of the Clone Wars was next to nothing like the Jedi Order the Republic encountered on Ossus 25,000 years prior. Hell, the only thing the two had in common was their philosophy and their outfits. We're going to start by going even further back into the history of the Order than that, to the very first Jedi Temple and the founding of the Order. As we'll explain in detail very soon, the Jedi Order evolved from the Jedi Order of Tython, a group of beings from across the galaxy that had been brought to the planet to study the Force. Their society on Tython, a lush deep core world with a special connection to the Force, was built around nine temple cities, which were made around the remains of the Thoyor, the pyramidal ships that had gathered the Jedi in the first place. These were Akar Kesh, the Temple of Balance, Anil Kesh, the Temple of Science, Bodhi, the Temple of the Arts, Mahara Kesh, the Temple of Healing, Kaleth, the Temple of Knowledge, Padawan Kesh, the Jedi Academy, Stav Kesh, the Temple of Martial Arts, Kigong Kesh, the Temple of Force Skills, and Vertepe, the Forge. These temples were all pretty much exactly what they sounded like. The masters who lived there dedicated their lives to a different aspect of the Force to study, and some had special roles. Vertepe, for example, was where Jedi went to forge special swords imbued with the Force, while all Jedi were trained at Padawan Kesh, from which the rank of Padawan got its name. Akar Kesh was the largest and most sacred of the Nine Temples, dedicated to studying balance both in the Force and on Tython. The time of the Jedi Order ended with the Force Wars of Tython, fought between the followers of Ashla and the Bogan, which is to say the light and dark sides of the Force. The followers of Ashla, the protectors of the balance of the Force, won the war and became the Jedi Order we all know and may or may not love. Tython was ruined in the process, however, and the Nine Temples were abandoned when the Jedi left the planet entirely. They fell into ruin and were forgotten for thousands of years. The Jedi Order settled on Ossus, an outer rim world that, like Tython, had a strong signature in the Force. But they didn't build a new temple. Instead, the Jedi scattered across the world, building small libraries and gathering sites. The largest was Jedi Praxium, a training facility library and gathering space in the city of Knossa. This was the state the Order was in when it encountered the Republic and agreed to protect it. Once it did, the Jedi spread across the Republic, building small shrines and gathering sites that, unfortunately, are almost all unknown to us. The only temple built during this period that we know of was the Jedi Temple in Ilum, where initiates went to get their lightsaber crystals. This temple was built around 22,800 years before the Battle of Yavin, and likely started as a small shrine that expanded over the years. It was never permanently staffed, but it was visited regularly enough to be counted as a proper temple. For most of the Republic's history, the Jedi Order functioned much, much differently than the Order we see in the prequels. It was led by a Jedi High Council, which was based on Ossus, but it had very little formal structure beyond that. Most knights and masters set out on their own, operating out of small camps or huts in the remote reaches of the planets across the Republic. In effect, they were doing what Yoda and Obi-Wan did during the Dark Times, except they weren't in hiding. They were very involved with the planets on which they lived, and were often called upon to solve local problems. The early Jedi Order was less like one order and more like thousands of tiny orders that all answered to Ossus. Jedi Masters tended to set upon small frontier worlds like Ambria or Dantooine and build up small orders around themselves, taking a handful of Force Sensitives as apprentices. 
Together, the masters and their apprentices would keep the peace of their world until the apprentices became knights and set off on their own. In that time, Jedi Knights were those Jedi who wandered the galaxy helping wherever they could, while Jedi Masters were knights who had settled down and started their own mini academies. The leader of a group of Jedi on a planet was also sometimes called a Jedi Watchman. As time went on, some of these scattered Jedi communities began to become more established. In 5000 BBY, after the Great Hyperspace War, the Jedi Order finally got a new permanent headquarters when the Jedi Praxium on Ossus was expanded into the Great Library. Many other worlds followed suit, with communities building small temples across the Republic. Many lesser-known Jedi temples, including the temples of Vormidge, the Dawn Temple of Spintir, the Hidden Temple of Arkinia, the Jedi Enclave on Mustafar, the First Temples of Oratera, the Senage Temple, and the Sky Temple of Castle were likely built during this period, or perhaps even earlier, though we don't have much in the way of clear information about any of them. In 3996 BBY, the Jedi Order was transformed by the Great Sith War, a massive conflict in which fallen Jedi Exar Kun and Ulic Keldroma started a schism in the Jedi Order, turning apprentices against their masters. They nearly brought down the Order and the Republic with it, and the conflict resulted in massive internal change for the Jedi Order. The Great Library of Ossus, and indeed everything on the entire planet, had been destroyed during the war, forcing the High Council to relocate. It was around this time that they settled on Coruscant, where they constructed an early version of what would become the Jedi Temple we all know well. The Great Sith War also resulted in tremendous changes to the internal structure of the Order. The Watchman system had left the Order vulnerable to Exar Kun and his schismatic ways, and so the Order began to consolidate. Over the course of the next few hundred years, the Jedi would go from being scattered guardians to the centralized order we know from the prequels, and as part of this process, many new Jedi temples were built. Sites where Jedi had been regularly training for centuries, like Dantooine, received their own enclaves. Those temples built during this period included the Jedi Monument on Renvar, the Temple on Dre II, the Temple on Iktoch, a temple on the newly rediscovered Tython, the Temple of Imperfect Repose on Falcon, the Temple of Edith on Deveron, and, most importantly, the Jedi Enclave on Dantooine. Most of these temples were built around special resonances of the Force and had unique significances that were largely lost to history. These temples typically served as watch posts, satellite academies, or hidden redoubts for the Order. The Enclave on Dantooine is the most well known and it exemplified how these satellite temples worked. Dantooine's temple was fairly small and unassuming, containing a council chamber, training rooms, a small starport, quarters for students, and a massive underground labyrinth of storerooms that were a pain to get through in Kothor II. The Enclave housed a few dozen Jedi and was notable for being the de facto headquarters of the Jedi Order during the Jedi Civil War, during which the Coruscant Temple was all but abandoned. As time went on, however, the Jedi began to abandon their other temples, focusing instead on building up the main temple on Coruscant, which was quickly becoming where most Jedi lived. This changed briefly during the Republic Dark Age, the final century of the New Sith War, during which the Jedi once more became a bit more nomadic in an attempt to put the Republic back together. Once the New Sith Wars ended, however, centralization continued at a rapid pace, and within a few decades, only a handful of Jedi lived somewhere other than Coruscant. By the time of the Clone Wars, very few satellite academies were still in operation. Of those that continued to exist, many, like the one on Bafash, frequently proved rebellious, which led to the Order further minimalizing the number of satellites. Aside from the main Jedi Temple and the Bafash Academy, there was a small temple on Dantooine where failed Jedi younglings were sent, and the Temple of Edith, which served as a military outpost. So that was our rundown of all the various Jedi Temples in the galaxy. But as per usual guys, I want to know your thoughts. Would you like to hear more about how the Jedi Order actually worked? And also, make sure you keep your eyes peeled for our next video, which is pretty much this, but the Sith version, where we're obviously looking at Sith temples instead of the Jedi temples. So make sure you stay tuned for that one, guys. And as per usual, just before you go, make sure you check out all those links in the description below. If you want to join the wider Star Wars community, you can check us out on Discord, where you can chat to myself and a bunch of other Star Wars fans as well. And our Gary's Mod server, where you can play games with other Star Wars fans such as yourself. 
Anyways, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.